in all four Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. It's important. Matthew and John were eyewitnesses to the account. Mark and Luke heard about it from eyewitnesses. And all of them say basically the same thing, and some of them add a few more details. So I want us just to look at just the first part of it. This is, as they approach Jerusalem, uh, Jesus and his disciples are together just a few days before. We don't know how many days before, but just a few days before he has raised Lazarus from the dead. So people are already excited about it. And as they're on their way to Jerusalem, not long before that also, Jesus had gone through Jericho and he'd healed the blind men. And so there was excitement about that as well. And as they approached Jerusalem, Jesus knew why they were going. The disciples had a little idea, but they didn't really understand what was coming up next. They came to Bethphage on the Mount of Olives. These days, we, we know where Bethany is, but we don't know where Bethphage is anymore. It's just, a, it was a small, a little small town, maybe a mile or two outside of Jerusalem. Uh, maybe Bethphage and Bethany were almost together on the Mount of Olives. And then the Mount of Olives was on a ridge on the eastern part of the city. And then you would descend the Mount of Olives down into the, it's called the Kidron Valley. And then you'd go up again to Jerusalem. And as the pilgrims came, they would always, to Jerusalem for Passover week, they would always walk. That was part of it. Jesus, for his three and a half years of ministry, also, the Bible tells us, he walked everywhere, everywhere. He walked. His feet touched the earth. They were dusty and dirty, and I'm sure they got tired, but they were beautiful feet because they brought the message of peace and the message of good news. And he walked everywhere until this one moment. And then Jesus sent two disciples. The Bible doesn't tell us who the two, two disciples were, a lot of scholars believe it was Peter and John because they were often responsible for, for things. But the Bible doesn't tell us, so we don't know. But Jesus gave very specific instructions. And he said to them, Go to the village ahead of you, and at once you will find a donkey tied there with her colt by her. Untie them and bring them to me. If anyone says anything to you, tell him that the Lord needs them, and he will send them right away. And I just want us to, in the one or two minutes that we have left this morning, to think about that. Here's Jesus, near the end of his ministry, and he knows what he's doing. We won't read the rest of the story this morning, but Jesus needed that donkey, needed the donkey. You say, Jesus doesn't need anything. Jesus needed that donkey to fulfill the prophecy about himself, which was that the, he would come riding on a donkey and it was to fulfill prophecy and at that moment Jesus needed the donkey and he sent his two disciples and he said go get that donkey and if anyone asks say the Lord needs them and they will immediately give them to give the, the donkey and its mother because the donkey had never been ridden before, had never been broken to the saddle, and yet Jesus was going to ride this donkey. And I was thinking about this yesterday, and I, I was thinking of this part more than anything else as I was preparing. Here's Jesus. He needed a donkey to fulfill prophecy and for a very specific purpose. And the message was, tell them the Lord needs them. Jesus is back in heaven this morning, seated at the right hand of the Father. But he still has plans for this earth and for people around us. He still has purposes that need to be fulfilled and carried out in this earth. And the Lord Jesus still needs a donkey today. Are you and I willing to be the donkey that Jesus needs to fulfill his purpose? Nothing great, nothing grand, not a cathedral in a major city. These pictures that we've looked at this morning, these are not big fancy cities. They may crumble and Manila won't care. Not much as, you know, not many people there. But Jesus has purposes in those places. And Jesus has plans in those places, but not just the Philippines. 
Jesus has purposes and plans for you where you are, in your families, in your workplaces, with your husband, with your wife, with your children or grandchildren, with people in the market or in your home country. And I wonder if the Lord is saying to us, I have need of you. I need you. Are we hearing the voice of Jesus when he says, I need you? And what will our response be? Will our response be what his was? This is the prophecy, say to the daughter of Zion, see your king comes to you gentle and riding on a donkey, on a colt, the foal of a donkey. And the disciples went and did as Jesus had instructed them, and they brought the donkey and the colt. And this very small act, which seems so unimportant in the greater scheme of things, Jesus was going to Jerusalem to be offered as a sacrifice for sin for the whole world past, present, future, for you and for me. But in all of the great scheme of things, the Holy Spirit inspired it to be recorded in all four Gospels. He needed a donkey. Do we hear the voice of the Lord today? I have need of you. What for, Lord? Sometimes the Lord doesn't tell us right away. He just says, I have need of you. He didn't give specific instructions to the people. He just said, I need the donkey. And the response was immediate. Here's the donkey. Sometimes the Lord tells us. Sometimes He doesn't. But I do believe, I do believe what we've seen here was an answer to the Lord saying, I have need of the donkey. And we saw these people that said, yes, immediately, to fulfill the purposes of the Lord. But forget about them and other people. This is for you and for me this morning. And the Lord says to you and to me to fulfill His purposes in this world at this time where you and I are. I have need of you. If anybody asks, say the Lord needs them. And the Lord says, I have need of you. What will your response be? Will it be an immediate yes, Lord, for whatever your purposes are? To be used by the Lord Jesus Christ. As Stephen said, he was walking around. God, what am I doing here? What is my purpose here? He didn't know. But he knew that the Lord had said, come on this medical mission, right? He knew God had said. What to do? He didn't know. He brought his guitar just in case. He was being obedient. And as he was obedient, the Lord said, this is how I'm going to use you. And that's how the Lord works with us sometimes as well. I have need of you. Yes, Lord. And then, brothers and sisters, we have the glorious, joyous privilege of being used by the Lord Jesus Christ to fulfill His purposes to fulfill His plans, to fulfill prophecies that have been made. Sometimes you and I don't even know what those prophecies are, but it may be in somewhere else that there was a prophecy about this. But when we say yes, we get to be the donkey that Jesus needs to fulfill His purposes in our lifetime, in our places. Amen? Amen? Let's close in prayer. Lord, we thank you that you need donkeys. And oh, Lord Jesus, we want to be willing when we hear your voice, when you say, I have need of you, that we will do as the owners of that donkey did so long ago. Yes, immediately, and untied the donkey and gave it to the disciples for the use of the Lord to fulfill prophecy and purpose and plans. Lord, may we be willing when we hear your voice and may we say yes when you say, I have need of you, that through our lives, 
whether it's small, medium, or large, you are able to fulfill and carry out your plans of love and healing and salvation and peace and reconciliation and grace and goodness and blessing in a world that needs all of these things. In the name of Jesus we pray. Amen. 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 God bless you in the Lord. Greet one another.